This is lecture 21, and I want to talk about project evaluation. I'm going to talk about perspective evaluation of urban transportation projects. Take a close look at this picture. Uh, do you see Mayor Villaraigosa in the middle of the picture? If you were the mayor of Los Angeles, one of the highlights of your day is uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies. Uh, the media is there, you're the star. Look at the mayor in the middle of this picture as he cuts a ribbon uh, celebrating this new light rail opening. And you love to see your name in the Los Angeles Times. Th this is a good day to be the mayor. The mayor is aware that uh, funding that ribbon cutting that b is other people's money. Most mayors have a short-term perspective. They seek to be reelected. They know they won't be mayor a decade from now. Mayor Daley in Chicago was a rarity. You're also well aware of the funding. 75% of, uh, of the funding for any public transit project comes from the federal government. It's other people's money. So if a project costs a billion dollars for Los Angeles uh, new light rail, that doesn't come from the people of L.A., 750 million of that would come from the national government, from North Dakota, from Chicago, elsewhere. Only a quarter of that would be the local constituents' money. As mayor, you're also well aware that you need to make your friends happy, the labor unions. And to build such a project, such a public construction project, it creates a lot of jobs and is going to give the labor unions a lot of power and money, who will then give you money back in campaign contributions when you run again. So you don't have to be Einstein here to see that it's going to be very tempting for a mayor to greenlight such projects, even if he's a Republican. Just the simple private incentives that we've just sketched. Economists are always grabbing the punch bowl at the party. Uh, so I want to put everyone in the perspective of the sober economists and bring some negativity here. So whenever we teach our sleepy undergraduates about project evaluation, we write some line of algebra on the board that we should, a good project is one that's Pareto improving such that the expected present discounted value of the benefits of the project exceed the expected present discounted value of the costs. It's often the case with urban transportation projects that you bear the cost now of uh, building the bullet train or the high speed rail or the subway and then over the next 50 years there's a flow of benefits and of course you have to use a present discounted value calculation to collapse this into an apples to apples comparison. Urban and transportation economists would ask which urban public transport projects are likely to pass this criteria. In the case of subways, I'm going to be really negative here and argue that almost none of these projects pass a cost benefit test. And this is relevant in the developing world today where all sorts of subways are being built in nations such as China. Why are the economists so nasty when it comes to these upfront projects that the mayors like so much? First, subways are irreversible investments. If you build a subway connecting Santa Monica in LA to the center city, and if, if it turns out that nobody wants to use this, uh, you can't turn that subway back into cash. So there's an irreversibility. You can turn cash, billions of it, into a subway, but you can't convert that subway back into cash. In many cases, what we've learned after we have built a costly light rail or heavy rail in a metropolitan area is that the growth is in the suburbs. And subways, by definition, connect uh, areas to the center city. For those who live and work in the suburbs, suburb to suburb trips and commuting and for leisure, you can't use a subway for that. Economists are also very concerned about the average fixed cost here. So look at the third bullet point. The numerator in this ratio is the cost of construction, maybe $5 billion for constructing uh, some infrastructure. The denominator is the ridership. If ridership is low, the average fixed cost could be enormous for one of these projects. And that worries economists. And we've learned in many cases, uh, for example, the Boston Big Dig, that perhaps no accident because of bad incentives, there's always cost overruns in delays in actually getting these mega projects done. There's also a social cost of the federal subsidies. While mayors may celebrate that they got a 75% discount on the project as they used other people's money, somebody's taxes are going to have to go up to balance the national budget. Uh, we can't 
rely that, that the Chinese are always going to buy our bonds at some point with our enormous deficit that becomes even larger with these kinds of projects. At some point, the chickens are going to come home to roost and we're going to have to finance this. On the expected benefit side, so I've just sketched that economists expect the cost to be very high of these projects, and unfortunately we've learned the hard way that the expected benefits of these projects are, is lower than boosters claim. The prominent economist John Kane from Harvard showed in several case studies, uh, ambushed in Atlanta, deceived in Dallas, hoodwinked in Houston, that subways never deliver the ridership that they promised ex ante. And I predict, unfortunately, that this same prediction will play out with California's high-speed rail. Part of the issue here is uh, that Kane pointed to is there's always boosters with PhDs in economics. There's always these paid consultants who do these fishy consulting studies that predict very high ridership before the project is done. And politicians, the mayors, love these consulting studies because it provides them political cover. They can point to this guy's study and say prestigious Dr. XX proved that this is a good project. And now that we've learned this, we're going to go ahead and we're using the taxpayer's money wisely. But I would ask, how did Dr. XX know this? It's actually a very challenging exercise to predict before we launch an experiment whether it will be a good experiment. So by experiment, I mean here, if Los Angeles builds an east-west subway, that's an, that's an experiment. What will its effects be? And we should only launch that experiment if we're very confident that the benefits exceed the costs. In microeconomics today, there's a large number of economists launching field experiments. These are smaller scale. For example, development economists are handing out bed nets for free or for a small price in the developing world to a treatment group and comparing whether malaria rates for those offered these bed nets decline relative to a control group who doesn't receive this incentive. But contrast that with these huge infrastructure projects we're discussing here. It's, these are enormously expensive up front, and if, if you build a quarter of the project, you're going to be out that money and you have no benefits. And so we... We face the challenge here that we don't know when we launch one of these field experiments, in the case of subways, what we're actually getting. And if you learn that it's not working, it's too late at that point. And so an economist would say that the project, before you launch such a project, the benefits, you should be very confident that the benefits significantly outweigh the costs because cost overruns will raise the costs and the benefits are likely to be smaller than predicted for the reasons we've discussed. Now, I do agree in cities such as Manhattan and London that the subway is a good, it, that subways have been good. I ride the subways in those cities. These are highly dense cities. A, only in cities, and in Beijing also, in cities that are highly dense in terms of population density, are, do, do subways make sense? Those boosters of subways often make a field of dreams claim that cities such as a Houston or a Dallas will become a uh, Hong Kong or Manhattan style density when there's a subway there. Because of the durability of capital, I don't believe that. But this field of dreams argument that you can remake a city with an investment funded by the federal government is very attractive to urban mayors. And economists, as we've talked through here, are highly skeptical.